Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Laurent Bukabza and today in the series of Tukatas, I'm going to present the Tukata from Aram Kachaturian. He's a Russian composer and he composed this piece in 1932. Because I'm not really sure that all of you know this piece, I think it's best that we're going to listen to it right now. Thank you. 
very dramatic piece. It's actually part of a suite. The Toccata comes from the Baroque period. This suite is actually different because the first movement is the Toccata, the second movement is the waltz, and the third movement is a dance. What is the form of this Toccata? Well, we have a large section that's cut into two halves with two different tempos. Then we have a middle section, as you heard, that was very romantic, very touching, kind of jazzy. And then it goes back to the beginning, but in a much shorter version. Composers don't like to repeat the same thing the same way. And that's what we're seeing here. So it starts with a big scream. And then we have that rhythm. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. This rhythm will be used extensively in folk music and later on in pop music. What a ta 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 because it's very catchy. It's a way of cutting eight notes into three plus three plus two instead of two, 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 or four and four. The person who did that also was Bartok, that did two plus three plus three, three plus two plus three, three plus three plus two, so pretty much all the combination possible to give a different sense of rhythm. So here it goes fast and we're... And then we have that section. So we see that we have chromaticism. That's two nostril. And then the left hand will keep at measure 13 the exact two nostril, but the right hand changes the pattern. So I'm here in measure 17 now. And I love this section at 19 because that sudden pianissimo with that note that sustained with an accent before and a 40 dynamic, it's a huge shock. difficult to do actually. Stay pianissimo. It doesn't say to crescendo, it says to crescendo after that. So that beginning needs to say pianissimo. I know it's a lot easier to do, but that's not what's written and I think it's losing character. And there's a huge progression that goes to measure 24. Here we see that we're not really in a key anymore. That piece at the beginning was somewhat of an E flat minor. But here we off key. With a bass of F. And arriving at measure 27, he does a hemiola. So instead of cutting three beats into two eights, two eights, two eights, he's gonna do three eights and three eights. I wanna be in America, I wanna be in America. That's what Bernstein will use later on with this one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two. I explained that in other videos on my Beethoven cycle. So if you haven't watched the Beethoven cycle of the three to Beethoven Saddam, click right there. Don't forget to subscribe. Just click on that button right here, it's a red button. Click on it and you will become a subscriber and all my newest video, you'll hear about them. So I'm measure 24 again. <laughs> You see, one, two, three, one, and now it goes back to the. So here we can do, I wanna be in America. I wanna be in America. I wanna be in America. Bernstein created West Side Story much later. But that's the concept. And then we have this. It's for tississimo, three Fs. But the interesting is that he wants you to change the pedal on that arrival to make it a sustenuto pedal. That means the pedal from the middle to sustain just that chord. You see? Just those notes hold, so to play that piano. And that gives that resonance, that's very interesting. And we're gonna see that he plays with resonance in the middle section a lot. So that resonance in here is announcing the resonance of the middle. So we don't wanna miss that one. And then Viva Chicken Brio at 41, and right away tempo. Right on 
tempo right away. There is no reason to go slower and accelerate. And, no, it's on tempo. Yam, ta, 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 spreading from each other. First we have that, and then we have that, and then we have that, and then we have that. To create that much tension, and as you notice, there's not really a sense of key, like we're not sitting on a key really. I'm at measure 62 right now with the two notes there. I think he's missing the two note slur because later on in the music we hear that. So we need to do a note. So. And now very interesting. And in fact, it looks very interesting, it goes very fast, but it's really not that difficult. What it is is that the right hand plays. And repeat. And the left hand plays the black key. To coordinate. And here, when the repetition happens of this B flat, it's repeated only for a measure and a half, not for three measures. So it's condensing already the story. And you see right away, instead of he's adding on. section. A little bell. Kind of rock my enough. And then we go back to except now we're gonna repeat that same and it's gonna change a little bit the pattern. We're gonna go almost to the highest note of the piano. The beans, the C is the highest and we're gonna repeat that and then repeat. Repeat then we'll do the half step below and repeat and then you just play the notes so come that middle section you see it plays with resonance that he holds chords and he changes the bass and he changes the chord but not the bass in here change the chord not the bass major is because G flat major is a relative major of E flat minor. It feels like a, an improvisation. So it needs to be played like that. Like some things that's created on the spur of the moment. You see this note? It just echoes. There are things that... And here I like the chromaticism at the left hand. So listen to your left hand. way because we're not doing we're just doing so that's the recap of this opening before we have the repeated notes will be very very short it's just saying hey that's where it comes from and he's asking to slow down remember the first time we had and here he doesn't do that down and suddenly a tempo and then he's gonna condense and give us just the second part of the first part so with a little bell to arrive to that section so you see this time when we recap we don't have that section 
to that section, but look here, the two notes are written. Here. And that famous one. resonance to kind of disappear. I think now we need to listen to it again and I'm sure you're gonna hear it with a very different ear. So let's enjoy the second time of that Chetchaturian Toccata. Thank you. 
What a fantastic ending, it's very dramatic. I hope you enjoyed my explanation. As always, don't forget to subscribe, please. If you want to become a member, receive master classes from me on a piece like this, for example. I'll show you how to become a member. If you want to listen to the 32 Beethoven sonatas that I present one over at a time, go on the playlist, that's free. You can also follow me on all social media, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter, or on my website that shows underneath at laurentbukobza.net. Leave me comments on which toccata you would like me to play for you. And I'll see you next week for the Debussy toccata, which is also part of a suite. So you see that relationship with Baroque is very important for these composers of the modern era. I'll see you all next week. Bye bye now.